Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fred from GiveMeCoding.com and what I'm holding here in my hand is a model of the Saturn V rocket that propelled the Apollo 11 crew to the moon where they landed and then eventually returned. But what I want to talk about in this video is going to be a story about the software they used to get them to the moon and also down to the lunar surface and return safely. So this summer we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 crew that landed on the lunar surface. The crew was made up of three great astronauts recognized as heroes here in the United States, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins. Now Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong are the two astronauts that descended while Michael Collins orbited around the moon observing and making sure that they were ready to return and then return back home. But more importantly, I thought, was when I dug into learning about this because I've been fascinated by this story for a very, very long time. My fascination starts with the whole space exploration thing very simply. So my birthday is July 20th and July 20th is the anniversary date of when they landed on the moon. Now, I'm a little bit older, but nonetheless, when I was a small boy, everybody would go out and look in these things called encyclopedias to find out what special events took place on their birthdays. So sure enough, I went out, I looked in the encyclopedia at the library, and I found out that my birthday and the landing on the moon happened to be the same day. There's a few interesting facts that I'm going to share with you that I found out or I uncovered as I started to dig into a little bit more about the lunar landing and Apollo 11. So we began to look at it, I wanted to ask the question of what was the type of software they used to get the men to the moon? There was a woman, Margaret Hamilton, and in the blog, if you'd like to go over there and read, there's a couple more specific details, but she was the team lead that was responsible for developing the software that would control the Apollo Guidance Computer, so the AGC. The AGC is an older computer by today's standards, obviously, and it was a single processor, which meant, well, it was limited as far as what it can do. Now by today's standards, we have processors in computers that can do multiple instructions or multitasks and it allows it to do many things at one time. This computer didn't have that capability so it had to go through things almost like in a sequential order. Now another thing that's interesting about this particular computer is it was using a programming language known as Assembler. Assembler is a coding language that allows you to speak directly to the hardware. Now, what's interesting about assembler language is it is built on what's known as machine code. So machine code being binary code or zeros and ones is a direct infusion right into the hardware. It is also referred to as a low level language. Now low level languages are different than what we call high level languages. High level languages make use of terms that we use in everyday language. So if you were to ever study a programming language like Java or Python or C++, you'll know that there's certain terms in there like while and for and if, and you have certain variable names. Assembler is a lot different where you're directly manipulating what are known as mem memory registers and you have to be very, very precise in how you are sending instructions. So with that being said, assembler language was the language that they used inside of the AGC. Where the story about the software that helped the astronauts get to the moon takes a real interesting turn is when I started to look a little further and there's a report, or not a report, a transcript that talks about error code 1202. So about 30,000 feet above the lunar surface, the lunar module is beginning to make its descent to land. In the descent aspect, it starts to report an error code 1202 on the AGC. Now, when you look at the interface of the AGC, you can see that it's very primitive by today's standards. However, this error code appeared and the astronauts then had to resolve it. When the error code appeared, those that are down at mission control were shocked. They didn't expect this type of error code to appear because during the simulations, it never did occur. They were aware of it, but it never occurred. 
So now they have to begin to work the problem. Immediately they were posed with the question of do we go or is it a no-go? A no-go meaning a no landing or a go meaning a landing. Now these astronauts have worked many years and they've traveled very far to make this happen. In their minds, they were thinking we were gonna go. They weren't there to abort the mission. However, he also didn't want to have a loss of life. Lost an American in space, we're sure as hell not gonna lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. So what then happened, the engineers started to work the problem. What they did notice, and it was actually one of the astronauts, Michael Collins noticed that when they said reset it from mission control, they watched the programs load. The error code was indicating there was a memory overload. So now every time they would get through these steps, a new program instruction would occur, taking up memory. Every time this new command would come in, they would be able to see something was triggering that. Michael Collins noticed that it was one of the radar units that was allowing them to detect range and velocity of the lunar module was causing this issue. Immediately, they were able to say what they needed to do, which is pretty neat. They were able to then say, Mission Control, down on Earth, you monitor the range and velocity. We won't run that line of code. That'll allow us to go around the air, and then we can continue on. That is just a great example of teamwork at its best. You have the people down on Mission Control working the issue. You also have the astronauts, who are right in the middle of it, also working the issue. Very familiar with the technology and trying to solve the problem quickly so they can continue on. And they did. The mission was a success. Apollo 11 landed on the moon where we had Neil Armstrong being the first human stepping on the lunar surface. What's really fun about this story is that it goes even further. I'm a big geek. I love technology, but I did miss this one story. There's a website out there. It's known as GitHub. GitHub is a software sharing repository. It's free. You can go out there and you could find examples of all kinds of programming code. You can use it, you could change it, work it into whatever project you have. Back in 2016, a NASA intern took what he found as the original code that was put into the AGC and placed it out onto GitHub. So of course, being the geek that I am, I went out to, to GitHub and we began to look at it. So what was real interesting to me was as you look through this code, so you're looking at assembly language, you're looking at the code, and you'll start to notice that there are comments. Now comments are simply notes that software programmers put into their programming code. It doesn't change the way the program is going to run or operate because the computer typically ignores commented code. But inside the comments are a number of very, very, say, interesting comments put by their software developers, and it gives you a little bit of insight into their sense of humor. And one of the most famous examples of the code, you'll see that one of the routines was named Burn Baby Burn. Now, Burn Baby Burn comes from a 1960s phrase, but ultimately they put it into the routine that was responsible for firing some of the rocket engines. As you go down further into the comments, you'll also see some funny things such as these. The first one being, see if he's lying, as it's referring to a set of steps that the astronaut would work through. Another one that I thought was really funny was one that says, off to see the wizard. So you can yourself follow the link that I have down here in the comments out to GitHub, and you could view the code repository yourself and study it and try to analyze it on your own. It's a great way to get a little bit of a glimpse into history. Okay, so obviously the lunar mission was a success. The astronauts lifted off from the lunar surface in the lunar module and then linked back up with the command module where the astronauts moved from the lunar module into the command module for their return home. With a touchdown by the capsule, the capsule returning back to Earth and then inside three safe astronauts. If you're interested in learning more about this, I would highly encourage you to go out to the links that I provide down in the comments section where you could read the full description of the transcript between the astronauts and mission control on that very famous day. Okay, that's all I have in this video. I hope you found it interesting on how they use software to get men to the moon. But more importantly, if you're interested in learning how to code, go head over to getmecoding.com, click start here, where you could then come out and sign up for free for a free coding activity, just to see what it's about and how you can get started learning how to code. 
please share this video out with anybody else you think might be interested in either learning this story or even beginning to learn how to code. That's it for Mr. Fred from GiveMeCoding.com. Thanks everybody and we will see you soon.